Hello, uh, my name is Scratch Tutorials, and today I will be teaching you how to make a Five Nights at Freddy's game in the new Scratch software. Uh, so basically, my last upload was with the old Scratch software, which looked a lot different than this. It's like so much newer. It looks a lot better, but that means that I have to relearn basically every part of it. Uh, but I think I got a hold of it fairly decently. So, basically what I already did is I made a title. Uh, so, we're just making a very simple Five Nights at Freddy's uh, game within Scratch. Uh, it, I, I know I basically, I'm basically doing it when Five Nights at Freddy's isn't really in its uh, peak right now. Uh, but yeah, so basically I just did a title screen. Very simple, just put text. It found a suitable uh, text text uh, color and font. Uh, I generally use red with uh, some font that I think looks acceptable for a Five Nights at Freddy's game. So next I imported the cat, and since the cat is already in uh, vector mode, you can grab his head and you can move it around, so I just sort of just did that. just. Uh, to sort of mock the, uh, and copy the, um, Five Nights at Freddy's title screen where the animatronics heads are moving around. Uh, so yeah, I did that, and that's basically where I am now. Uh, for the longest time, I actually tried to record this video, but for some reason the, uh, GIF, uh, GIF, or GIF, whatever you want to call it, it did not upload successfully. And I get that. I guess that was just a bug with the software at that time. But it seems that they fixed that because I tried it out and it worked. Uh, so yeah, let's get right into this. So first, we're going to get the cat to uh, do his little gyrating thing. So first, we're gonna set him to look kind of dark because right now he kind of looks uh, too bright. So we're gonna change. Um, not we're gonna set. We're gonna set the brightness to be. We're gonna do like uh, 40 or something. Oh, whoops, wrong one. Uh, so basically zero means that it's default and then negative is going dark. Whoops. So we're gonna set to like 20 maybe. Maybe 30. Okay, that looks good. So basically we have him so he doesn't look too bright for it. So always do this. Uh, always so as soon as you as soon as you um, move him around, this will update. So if you get him in the right position, always put that right there because sometimes you'll just be messing around and moving something around and whoops, you you mess something up. So you, it's great to put that there in order for it to reset to its original position once you start. So next we're gonna go and we're going to put a forever right here. Since uh, once we start the game, we can end this forever script with a uh, stop all, stop all uh, things in the sprite. It's uh, stop other scripts in the sprite. So we can do that in a broadcast. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna put rent when I receive message, and we're going to make a new message, and we're gonna say game start. If you want to be proper, you can do game start, and there you go. So once we press the button, which doesn't exist yet, we can go ahead and start the game, and it will automatically stop that. So we're gonna put in here, we're gonna have it randomly change to the like messed up bent head kind of thing. So that is, uh, that is sprite 2 to 5. So we can go to switch, uh, switch costume, and we can actually put a random thing in there for, uh, 2 to 5, and it will randomly select which one to do it at. And since we're switching the costumes, uh, we don't want it, when we restart the game, we do not want it to be the same like this. Because currently when you restart it, it's, it's like that. So we're going to go ahead and switch to uh, costume normal at beginning. So now it'll look normal. Now if we just put this right in here, it's just going to go crazy. Uh, so 
we probably want to change that so it does not do that that often. So we're gonna set a random right here so it will randomly do it uh, between like three and seven. We can see if that's good. And we will wait uh, between about two and seven, three and seven. Okay. So now we've ran into a problem that once it's done, it does not restart, it does not go back to the original. So we're just gonna have it switch to the original. Perfect. So now it does its glitchy thing, and then it stops. Okay, perfect. So, now, as you know of all Five Nights at Freddy's games, there's generally static on the menu. So, let's go ahead and do that static. So we are going to upload a sprite, and we're going to do this. So now we have a static thing right here, and we're going to go ahead and just make this, oh, whoops, we're going to make this bigger. So how we do that on the new scratch editor is, uh, first let's set it to 0, because that's always good to set something that generally wants to be in the middle, into the middle. So we're gonna set size, and we're just gonna adjust this to like 150. Perfect. So let's go ahead and get our uh, one flag clicked. So now we have it on 150, and it covers the entire screen. Problem is, is that now we can't see anything. So that's kind of bad. And by the way, here's our static. Uh, so we also want to animate it, so we're just gonna do, um, we're just gonna do a forever, and then change costume. It's, uh, next backdrop. So, oh, whoops, that's backdrop. That's costume. Costume. There we go, perfect. So now it looks like actual static. And if the static just for some reason looks a little bit fast for you, like it sort of does for me, you can adjust this to like 0 0.05 or something, and then it'll be a little bit slower. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it as that. But as you can see, we have a major problem is we can't see anything on here. So we're gonna have to adjust that. So what we wanna do is we want to uh, go to looks, and we want to go to the same thing as the color uh, we want to do the same thing as brightness, and you'll see uh, that there's one called ghost. So you can actually set this to a certain amount, and it will become transparent. So now we're getting somewhere. Now it looks a little bit more like a Five Nights at Freddy's game. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So that's perfect. We have the title screen completely done, except for the play button. So let's go ahead and do the play button and then we can start working on the game in the next episode, uh, next tutorial. Uh, so I will actually include the static um, in the description, so you can go ahead and go and download it yourself and import it into your Scratch uh, developer webpage. So we'll just go ahead and clean this up a little bit, perfect. And yeah, so we're just going to add the play button now. So the play button doesn't have to be that complicated, uh, but we want it to look good. So we're going to go ahead and grab a, we're gonna go ahead and grab a new, or we can actually, no, actually we can just put it on the backdrop. And I'll show you the trick we're gonna use. So we're going to go ahead and put it on the backdrop, set it to, oh, let's set it to this color. Perfect. And we're going to do the text, and we're going to say play. And we're going to set this to be especially big. There we go. So we're going to make this especially big so it's prominent. So there we go. Now our play button's there. Now, problem is, is that we can't add anything to the play button. Also, we probably want to... See, that's what I'm talking about when you click... Uh, want it to reset to its original position. So the problem is, is that we can't actually click it. Uh, we can't add any code to the play button on the backdrop. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to create a new sprite. And this thing does not have to look good at all. You can just 
sort of. Now this uh, sprite, this sprite doesn't have to look good at all because you are just making a square pretty much. Now you want to make this a decent size and you want to make sure it completely covers up your play button. Perfect. So now this is pretty important. You want to, uh, hold on. You want to be able to uh, set your position. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, I guess since it's not auto-filling right here, we're just gonna have to type it in ourselves. So negative one, zero, four, and negative nine. So now it's frozen there and it won't move. And if it does, we can just click the uh, flag in order to reorient it. So now we're actually going to, now, so if you were to do just hide, now you couldn't click on it in order to get the game to work. So actually what you want to do is, let's show it, you actually want to just set a ghosting effect to 100. It does the exact same thing, but now you can actually execute code. And it looks better because the play button is behind the static. So we want to also uh, do a go to front layer. So it will always be in front of the static once we start the game. Now we're just going to do a simple, uh, when the sprite is clicked, it will send the code to, it will send uh, game start. So we're just going to say that when game is started, we're just going to hide. So it will no longer show up in game and it will no longer execute code while in game. So, we're also going to, we're not going to hide the static, and I'll show you why, but we will hide the cat. So, we're just going to stop all scripts and sprite, and we're going to hide the cat. So, when we click it, okay, so it seems that, th I actually did not know this, but they actually updated it, so I guess now, uh, you can't set it to 100% transparency in order to, for it to still execute code. Just kind of uh, bad, um, but we can still work with just putting it at 99%. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and put a show script right there. So as soon as we click it, it disappears. Uh, now, what we wanted to do in the static is uh, we want to go ahead and do when I receive game start, and we're going to keep on executing this code. So nothing needs to affect, nothing needs to change here. We're just going to do a repeat 10 times, but well, we're going to adjust this 7 times or 70 times, and we're going to just adjust it, uh, adjust the ghosting effect by negative 1, so it slowly becomes, it slowly fades back in, but that is too slow, so let's Try seven and negative ten. We just need it. We just need it to be a smooth transition. Okay, that's pretty smooth. So once you click it, this will fade. Uh, this will fade out in static, and then it will fade in into like first night or something. So this is where I'm gonna end the first tutorial on a Five Nights at Freddy's project. Uh, by the end of this, you should have a fully functioning, decent Five Nights at Freddy's project. Uh, and it'll be pretty cool. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you uh, n next tutorial.